First book of the week. The Great Ideas of Philosophy is a book written by Daniel Robinson, a distinguished professor at the Georgetown University. The book provides an overview of some of the most influential ideas in the field of philosophy, including the nature of reality, the meaning of life, and the concept of justice. In the book, Robinson begins discussing the ancient philosophers, Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle. He highlights their key ideas, such as Socrates' ex emphasis on self-examination, Plato's theory of forms, and Aristotle's belief on being virtuous. Robinson then goes in to discuss the medieval philosophers, philosophers like Augustine, Thomas Aquinas, and Dante Alighieri. He explores their thoughts and topics such as the existence of God, the nature of soul, and the ideas of a just society. Robinson also delves into the ideas of modern philosophers, including René Descartes, John Locke, Immanuel Kant, and Friedrich Nietzsche. He provides an overview of their key concepts and how they have shaped the field of philosophy. Robinson then concludes by discussing contemporary philosophy, including the works of Martin Hydra, Jean-Paul Sartre, Michael Foucault. He explores their ideas on the natures of existence, the meaning of life, and the concept of power. Yet, throughout the book, Robinson provides a clear and concise explanation of the complex philosophies that now are accessible to everybody in today's world. Overall, The Great Ideas of Philosophy is a comprehensive and engaging overview of some of the most important concepts in the field of philosophy. Robinson's writing is accessible, informative, and provides a valuable introduction to these great ideas that have continued to shape the world we live in to this day. All in all, I found this book incredibly informative. It's a really good cross-sectional slice of all the philosophies of all the ages. It's a great little taster for each individual philosopher. It's also a great way of discovering which philosophers you want to in develop and investigate further. All in all, this book is a 30-hour read, so it is, a, it is a big book to read. And it does take a little bit longer than a week. However, it is well worth the time and the effort. And it has given me a few really good deductions and led me down the lines of really focusing on polit politics as a main f area where perhaps the history of the philosophers have sort of foretold the issues we were going to have right now in our political system. And maybe we can find a way of improving politics through the, the ancient philosophers. I mean, let's think about philosophers and politics. With everything I read, I'm constantly searching for answers and looking to books to expand my knowledge and clear a path to my next step in life. I think that there is a lot of wisdom to be gained from looking to the past for knowledge, then comparing what we know today. Politics is a perfect example of old knowledge, perhaps guiding us to a better future. Socrates believed that every citizen has a moral obligation to, involve, to be involved in politics. He argues that the well-being of the state is directly linked to the moral character of its citizens and therefore it is essential for everyday individuals to take an active role in shaping the policies of the state. He believed that the only way to achieve a just society was for citizens to be informed and participate in the political process. Aristotle believed that every individual should participate in politics, but for different reasons. He argued that political involvement is necessary for the development of an individual's moral character. He believed that the act of participating in the political process would help individuals develop their reasoning skills, a sense of justice and compassion for others. Plato, however, believed that only a select few should be involved in politics, specifically those who possess the knowledge and wisdom required to govern justly. He argued that the average individual was not equipped with the necessary skills to participate in politics and that their involvement would lead to chaos. Plato believed, that the f believed in philosopher kings, individuals who possessed both wisdom and knowledge were best suited to govern. However, in conclusion, ancient philosophers held different beliefs on the different roles individuals should play in politics. While Socrates and Aristotle believed every citizen should be involved, Plato believed that only a select few should be participate. Regardless of the views, the philosophies of these great thinkers continues to shape the way we think about politics and, the ind and our individual roles within our politics. My thoughts tend to agree with Aristotle and Socrates, as I believe more people should become involved in politics. 
A greater level of participation leads to a more diverse perspectives and ideas being represented, leading to more equitable and inclusive design decision making, which leads to more equitable and inclusive decision making without legislative enforcement, like we are seeing today. Secondly, when a large proportion of the population is politically engaged, increases the accountability of our elected officials, as they are more likely to be held accountable for their actions. Currently, nobody is holding our politicians to account for upholding their political promises. Additionally, political involvement allows individuals to have a voice in shaping the policies that affect their lives, leading to, a great, leading to greater engagement and satisfaction within the political process. Finally, political involvement helps to foster a sense of community, a shared responsibility for the well-being of society. By becoming by becoming involved in politics, individuals can work together towards a common goal, promoting a sense of unity and collective purpose. In short, political involvement by a broader cross-section of society leads to a more representative and accountable and engaged political system. And this is so true. Ultimately, we all need to be more active in our political areas. We, we totally understand that there's certain areas that we can't dictate and we can't control. However, at the moment, it really feels to me, especially, that politics is being sensationalized either far right or far left. And nobody seems to want to just bring it to the middle. Most people are happy just with politics in the middle. Let the political stance be center, leaning either slightly left or slightly right, depending on the politicians that are in for the day. But the extreme lefts and the extreme rights, they need to be controlled. For the greater good and we, and we do that through our political system ultimately if everybody turns out and votes we will get a good cross section of the political of the political structure of our, our of our of our of our country and ultimately the majority will always be center leaning slightly left or slightly right that is how it should be in my opinion i think everybody should take more time in becoming more politically active. It is important for the, the state of our nations, for the individuals to become more politically active and vocal in our political desires. Ultimately, nobody wants to give up their lives and go and run for politics. There is only a select few people that want to deal with that type of stress and that type of persecution and that type of being in the public, public eye. However, it is important for everybody to identify people that they deem worthy of those positions and who has the best interests of the community, not the financial institutions that maybe fund them.